Hey, it's Mark Podolsky at The Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And this podcast and these podcasts are always a listener favorite because we're going to get one of our students who recently completed our flight school program and really talk a little bit deeper about their experience, uh, what it was able to do for their life so that you can uh, get a get a peek behind the curtain. So our guest today is star student Joseph Ramirez. Joseph, welcome. Woo! Excited to be here. Thank you, Mark, for inviting me. So, Joseph, how did you find me, Land Geek? How'd you get started? Oh man, uh, it was it was it, it was a tough situation. Um, so. Uh, uh, my wife has talked about land investing and she's talked about like, uh, um, you know, when we drive, uh, she would tell me, hey, look at that land must have some value. Um, as a teacher for 10 years, I look at the land and I think, well, it's just dirt. Who would be interested in dirt? Right. Um, and so uh, uh, when she got sick and it's, is it OK if I share my story here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's the time, right. So uh, when she got sick, um, you know, she had to go to things like chemo and radiation um, and uh, she's she's doing well now. She's you know, she's uh, been healed by Jesus. And so we uh, um, uh, we. We, we were having a hard time connecting because uh, as a teacher, I still had to go to work. I still had to go to school. I serve the community. And it was tough because that's how I get paid. And if I don't work, uh, I don't get paid. And so um, I had to look for something where I can uh, do something online and something that I could do, you know, passive income. And I started listening to podcasts and um uh, I heard uh, land investing from Mark Podolsky, and that's really how I found you. You see, at the first listen to the podcast, I thought, man, that makes no sense to me. Why would people uh, do land, right? It's, it just yeah. makes no sense. But I listened to it like four or five times, and I um, and I thought, something is real here. Um, and, and, and that's when it clicked. You know, I needed uh, to get into this, and I needed... Um, to, to step into it. And so um, the way I started um, uh, flight school is not the way I, I would recommend people to start flight school because here's the thing. I was kind of in a desperate situation. I told my wife, hey, it's a big chunk uh, um, of money, but I, I believe it's worth it. It's like half, you know, my, my yearly income is like half of that as a private school teacher was a lot. Um, and so she said, no, don't do it. Don't don't invest right now. And I said, yes. And so um, it was a very, very tough um, uh, a few months as I was trying to navigate teaching and then land investing at the same time, um, sure. like having almost like a, a full-time job and then trying to figure out what land investing is all about. But, uh, you know, I, I dug in, I took flight school and that's, uh, you know, there's a- uh, that, how, that was how did you convince your, your wife to take the leap? considering the investment. <laughs> so, um, so the thing is I didn't, right. And that's why I would say, you know what, if I had another choice, I would wait a few more months. I didn't, what I did was I took the step. She said, no, don't do land investing right now. And I said, I'm sorry, but it was the only choice I have. Right. Okay. Um, because I wanted to spend more time with her. Um, uh, I did, however, you know, after flight school and six months after that, I was able to replace my income off teaching and be able to do land investing uh, full time. Um, and so wow. I didn't convince her from the get go. But after six months uh, um, of uh, doing land investing, um, I was able to replace my income. And then uh, I was going to visit one of my land. And so, you know, one of the things that I like to do is I, I live in Florida. I love to visit the land. And she said, you know what, if you can drop me off the beach while you visit one of your lands, I'm going to be okay. And so uh, she, she was, uh, she was uh, more open to me doing land investing. Yeah. So I know that, you know, your so your wife's going through, uh, you know, um, emo and, and she's, she's getting better uh, or, or she's, or she's trying to get better, but you want to spend more time with her and you've got this full-time job, but now you've got a, a new business. How yeah. did you, how did you create enough time for yourself so that you could 
get everything you wanted and then replace your income in six months. What was yeah. that like? My my thought uh, was I have this six months goal. That was my thought, right? Um, and so for me to see almost like a light in the tunnel, I know it's going to be a lot of hard work in the beginning, but seeing how this works um, uh, was what uh, got me through. You know, I, I want that light in the tunnel of like um, being able to spend time with family. I know having a full-time job and then doing land investing is counterintuitive where I'm spending less time. Um, but I, I, I knew that, uh, you know, the more I learn how to do this, uh, the better I'll get at it. And so uh, that gave me um, kind of uh, the focus that I needed to do um, to be able to continue land investing. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. How, so how many hours a week do you think you spent in the beginning? Um, in the very beginning, uh, so with the, with the flight school, um, when I was doing flight school, I would say I'd maybe spend 10 hours um, uh, throughout flight school, 10 hours a week. Um, and then uh, after that, I was slowly transitioning into more and more hours. And at, at the one point, you know, right at that six month mark, it was when I was really uh, doing, uh, it was almost like a full time job, right? So. Mm -hmm. The, the like a 40 hour a week but here's the thing the seventh month i can work if i want to right yeah I can, you know I, I spend maybe an hour or two the seventh month uh an hour or two a week um but that was that was the goal right to replace my teaching income so i can spend more time with family wow okay so do you have a favorite deal a favorite deal a favorite deal Woo. well I like to go outside the box. And so one thing I love flight school is that you get to work at the pace that you're, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you're preferring. And so I know with flight school, we uh, work with a land that is, you know, tiny and it, it's repeatable, a repeatable process. But I saw this great opportunity where there was a 10 acre lot here in Florida and, you know, 10 acre lot in the other States, you know, it's, affordable here in Florida. It's, it's, it's a big chunk. And so sure. um, <laughs> it was like uh, twice as much as my yearly income and then some, right? Uh, and so I was like, uh, I've, I've got to take this deal because it's a great deal and I knew I could sell it. Um, uh, and with uh, with the things that I learned from flight school. So I, I took the, the jump where I actually bought the land. Um, uh, How making, did you get the money? I'm, I'm I'm making monthly payments on the land. Oh, okay, great. I'm making okay. monthly payments on the land, and there's a uh, interest, but uh, I am making twice as much on a monthly. The term, you know, what I learned from the flight school, I, I'm 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 making uh, twice as much as okay. as monthly. So you so you did a land arbitrage deal. I did, yes, and that's one of the things that that's really helped me. It's still helping me now. Um, even from flight school is that land art deal. Yeah. That's amazing. So for those of you that have just now are hearing land arbitrage for the first time, it's when you buy a piece of property, but instead of paying the full you know, retail value of the price, let's say it's $40,000, you look at the market and you say, okay, if I could buy this for $500 down, $500 a month, but I know that the market is a thousand dollars down a thousand dollars a month i only need to come up with five hundred dollars and i can control a forty thousand dollar parcel of land so no problem and then you flip it and you make the spread so in this scenario joseph would be making five hundred dollars a month to control that land and and continue doing that and so if he knows he can sell it once even if the person defaults his only risk is making that $500 a month payment that next month while he goes and finds a new buyer. But he's paid down his cost basis with that uh, first buyer and continues doing that. And it's it's an amazing uh, it's an amazing strategy if you are capital constrained uh, to control land and and do that. So Joseph, that's that's amazing. What a great deal. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 been amazing, and I I I'd like to share one more if that's okay. Yeah, of course. 
So uh, one of the things I learned from uh, flight school is being able to mail out letters, right? Uh, and and I did a similar mistake that uh, <clears throat> I heard one of uh you know one of your experience with land is you bought the land and then you was like you you didn't think you were going to sell it and so i bought a half acre and it was um yeah i i thought it was a good part of land i thought it was high and dry ground apparently i didn't do my enough of the due diligence and so it was like wetland you know it's a lower land floods there every year and so um i was like oh no uh how am i gonna price this and so uh i price it similar to what i would price a high and dry ground but um it wasn't selling so i price it lower i wanted to get rid of it i price it like when i'm only making like 10 percent right? right so but it's, it still wasn't selling. I was like, oh, no. Right. So what I did is I priced it like right around that mid range, mid range. And I actually forgot about it because there were other land I'm focused on. And I didn't care about that land. Um, and so uh, it was uh, it, it was um, a few months later that someone said, I really want this land. And he why did, why did they want it? Uh, he they made a payment online. Uh, they, they said that they're familiar with the area that's the okay. lot that they're looking for so i don't know uh what they're doing with the land but they said i want it and i'm ready to make a payment now you know it wasn't really much of a conversation um and and then he he made the payment online and it, that's just so cool because i didn't have to set up the payment for him to make a payment right you go i go online and i realize oh someone made a payment and sure enough it was for that land that's amazing that's a that's a, another great deal, and people always laugh when I say there's a, a pig for every barn, but there there really is. And I, I think what's interesting is that if you price it too low, you're signaling to the market there's something wrong with the property. You're just not the right buyer for that property. But there's always someone else out there that's that's going to want that land. The same way I don't eat McDonald's, but a billion people eat it. I'm just right. not the market for McDonald's. So Joseph. What uh, does your team look like right now? Because we're always talking about, we don't want to build another job for ourselves. And you had worked really hard to not have to work right. so hard. How, how did you start delegating and outsourcing and systematizing uh, and automating your business? So the how part is actually, um, uh, you know, in flight school in itself, you know, we teach you like, you know, if, if it causes the biggest pain, hire a virtual assistant for that. Um, so uh, one of the first thing I did was hire a due diligence person um, because I didn't want to have to go through all that. So what I did is I created a video um, and and used that video to train someone. Now uh, in flight school, you, you teach that if you have three people on it, then you really only have two. If you have two, then you have one. And if you just have one, you have none. Right. So I started with hiring people, three people uh, for that job. And then, you know, found one person that's really good at it, uh, a minor, uh, someone who, who who works on it somewhat. So two people and that that third person uh, um, uh, was just there um, available, if anything. Um, so so that's what I, that's what that's what I did. Uh, I'm I'm Filipino. I, I always tell people <laughs> I'm made in the Philippines. <laughs> I even got the shirt for it. There it is. I right? love it. And, in the Philippines, I'm connected with this church, uh, Baptist church that um, are, uh, uh, you know, they're looking for opportunities to work online. And I said, well, I'm looking for opportunity to find people to work online, right? So we got connected and it's been really a blessing to be able to work uh, with them. Um, and so uh, I, I hired my due diligence um, uh, and then I uh, hired marketing. Um, I hired sales. Um, I still do a little bit of the sales because uh, I love sales. Um, uh, one of the things that I do now is intake and intake has become so automated um, that I don't really work much to intake the land. It's a simple, you know, um, you all make an offer, it get accepted. And so it's been automated for the most part. So if I were to like, um, let's just say, you know, get sick for a whole week, um, I know people are um, working. And if they have questions, they just let me know. And then, and so it's just been a blessing. Fantastic. So are you using any artificial intelligence or chat GPTs to, to streamline your processes or your, is your team? Where's AI in all of this for you? I wish there were more, 
right? I wish yeah. I knew much about it, but I'm a simple guy. You know, I'm coming from a teaching third grade background. Um, I don't have any AI skill chat, GPT skills. Um, so not much of that, but hey, yeah, I feel like you, you may have some ideas, Mark. What are your thoughts? No, no, for sure. We're going to have a, a training on that in, in the near future. <laughs> Um, you know what we're finding though, it's just a good intern. It, it's not, it just saves time. Uh, I wouldn't ship any of their work and what we're finding on the marketing side, when people are, are using it for marketing, their ads are not getting, uh, are not converting into sales like, like they should be uh, before chat GPT. And they kind of, they all kind of start to sound the same as well. So, all right, Joseph, knowing what you know now, what would you have done differently? in your journey? Ooh, um, the biggest thing is relationship. And, uh, you know, my, um, my relationship with Christ, my relationship with my family, my relationship with his friends. Um, I felt like uh, I, I could have prayed more. Absolutely. That's one thing. Definitely could have prayed more. I could have uh, waited a, a little bit longer until my wife was open to it. Um, maybe even a whole day. Right. Uh, I'm I'm the type of guy, if I see a great deal, I jump on it right away. Right. I could have at least right. waited the day. Right. Um, so I, I would uh, definitely just take my time. Um, uh, at the very least, take 24 hours before jumping into this. Uh, I mean, God has blessed the companies, blessed my family. Um, if, if I were to go back, I, I, I would definitely do a little bit of those. Pray more and wait for my wife. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So how has the land business changed your life? Man, um, let me tell you, um, December, this past December, um, my sister is in the Navy. She's in uh, Italy. She's stationed there. And, uh, you know, it's it's kind of hard for family to go over there, you know. So I uh, figured uh, my mom wanted to visit her. Um, and and my mom didn't want to go alone. It's a different country, um, you know, with, with uh, war in Ukraine and Russia. It, it's pretty tough. Uh, uh, so this, this, this past December, um, I took the leap of taking my mom. To Italy to visit my sister and taking my wife, um, and uh, uh, we were able to spend time with my sister. Uh, she's in the navy. She's loving Italy, and we were introduced to some real Italian food. I mean, it, the tomatoes in America are kind of okay, but in Italy, man, it is amazing. And you know, the pizza there is just so so different. Very real, very um, nutritious, uh, I, I would say. And so uh, <laughs> um, it, it was an experience, but I was able to do all that because I didn't have to teach in the classroom, right? right? Uh, I, I substitute now. Uh, I substitute at Christian school, and it's been uh, an amazing experience. But I know I can take off that time. And here's the cool thing. When I was in Italy, you know, as my wife gave me permission to work two hours a day. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I was able to buy and sell land from Italy. You know, it's, it's just it's just an amazing, amazing experience to have that time freedom, to have that financial freedom. Um, you know, there's stress and uh, other things that comes along with that. You know, what if someone defaults, right? Uh, you know, I had to make a phone call because someone is late in their payment because you know, of something, right? Sure. So there are those kind of stress, but for the most part, it's really a blessing i can choose to work when i want um and how much i want i love it and and you know it's such a blessing that your your wife has recovered and that you were able to spend the time with her um that you did and and uh i remember we were on a on a call and and someone asked you know what's your your favorite place in the world and your answer was Anywhere my wife is. I, lo I love that answer. Uh, it's fantastic. So Joseph, we're at that point now and your your advice and your mentorship has been invaluable. But now I'm going to ask you to put you on the spot one more time and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Well, I would say this. Um, if, 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 if you find that it encourages you, uh, that you're learning from it, continue to do it, whether it's uh, a prayer, whether it's uh, reading a book. Um, uh, uh, let's see here. I do have a book here. 
give me just a moment here. Um, and so this one uh, was uh, uh, the one that that really helped me become of more of a salesperson. Um, uh, I didn't think I was uh, a salesperson, but um, you know, anytime in life we're trying to negotiate, you were trying to sell. Um, you know, uh, our our point of view. We want our point of view to get across. Um, and so this book. Uh, never split the difference. Uh, negotiating as if your life depended on it by Chris Voss with Tal, uh, Tal Ross um, uh, helped me in being able to not just negotiate in business. You know, we need that, uh, but also negotiate like with my wife. It's like you know, uh, let's let's uh, uh, go to a restaurant and let's. This is the reason why. Why um, one thing that I would say that uh, um, this taught me is to be able to speak in a calm manner, um, depending on the situation. And uh, no matter no matter what the situation is, we have to stay calm. Uh, um, our voice needs to be, be a DJ FM uh, at night voice, and it, I thought that was just a really cool thing because calmness is um, is. Uh, 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 what do you call it when he spreads from one another? Contagious. It's contagious. Thank you. Calmness yeah. is contagious. So when you're calm, the other part is calm, they feel safe. And when you feel safe, um, it, it's a place where you'd want to stay. I love it. It's such a great book. Uh, I think it's been recommended a bunch of times. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Joseph and the land he has uh, for sale. Go to landnoworlater.com. We'll have a link to it landnoworlater.com. And, um, you know, I do want to just mention that if you want to become like Joseph and learn more about flight school, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Hopefully this has inspired you in your journey as well. Thelandgeek.com forward slash training and uh, get on a call with our team and learn more and, and see if it's uh, going to be your ticket to total freedom so you can work when you want, where you want, and with whom you want, uh, like Joseph Ramirez. So, Joseph, are we good? I, I, I'm i thankful. Thank you, Mark, for bringing me here. This has been a blessing, and I hope uh, to be to continue working with you and working with others who are interested in land investing. Thank you, Joseph. It's It's been a pleasure. I want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way we're going to be able to continue to get great guests like Joseph, if you do three favors, Follow, rate, review the podcast. Send a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich. And uh, pretty soon, Dirt Rich 2 is going to be coming out. The plot thickens how to scale your land business without missing a beat. All right, Joseph, we're going to do this together. Woo! One, Thank you. two, three, let's yes. freedom. Freedom. Ring. Ring. All right. Let's do it again, Mark. One more time. One more time. Let's. Let's. Freedom. Freedom. Ring. Ring. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.